In every round of golf, there are moments that define your ability regardless of your skill level. Between strings of seemingly average shots, there are moments of brilliance and moments of complete exasperation. These are the coachable moments. With proper reflection, these are the opportunities to learn. And in this film room session, we'll use the Tangent Golf app to review these moments from a competitive tournament round on the US Am Tour. This was an important four day tournament for me at the US Am Tour National Championship. Let's see where my game breaks down when the lights are the brightest. Welcome to the film room. We're gonna start by listening to some rules. These are going to lead to an important learning moment later in this round. Okay. Just give our black team markers all the way around the golf course should be good to go. Pace of play, it's real simple, guys. You keep up with that group, everything's happy and glorious. Mm -hmm. I do have to stress, you have two hours and five minutes for the nine holes or no more than 14 minutes behind that group in front of you when you put the pin in on nine and 18. Otherwise, we will ding you two strokes. We're at Sun River Resort just south of Bend, Oregon. It's a gorgeous piece of property with three beautiful golf courses. All right, now on the TR 1242 pairing out of Murphy, Texas, Mr. Dallas Webster. The first hole of the Woodlands course is a nice little handshake, a dogleg left par five. You can see the tangent AI caddy is telling me to hug the left corner and rip a driver. Plenty of room up there and a good opening hole for my draw, but I'm nervous. Lots of deep breaths and positive visualizations. I pumped this out there. The ball doesn't go quite as far as it does in Texas. We don't have this dense grass, but I pumped this out there 290 yards. My median drive on this day is 274 yards. That's longer than my handicap goal of an elite amateur. And that drive left me an outside shot of hitting the screen too. However, long irons were not my strong suit this week. And with water left, I played it safe, leaving a pretty elementary chip here. Lots of green to work with. A little strong, sit. Carried my spot a little bit. All things considered, I would have signed up for a 15 footer for birdie on the first hole. It's a shot at birdie, an easy par, and get some of those nerves out of the way as we settle into this big round. And predictably, with those nerves, I left that putt short. We'll mark that in the tangent app with putt details. It's an easy par to get started. It's five. The second hole is a shorter par four, but a dogleg right. Caddy has me aiming just right of the fairway bunker. The water isn't really in play off this tee box. And I hit a pretty good one, just past the bunker and runs through into the rough. Hulk smash. Nice. My heart is still racing. Nerves take a bit to go away in these big tournaments. Right, 147. We're at a little elevation here, so the ball is flying already, and this looks like a flyer lie in the rough. Get out of here. Yep, Get out of that here. flew. Get down. Never saw that coming. Good swing, but now we're in a tough spot. Out of the rough to a green that slopes away. This will test my scrambling ability. <sighs> 20 yeah. yards, but I mean, tricky, tricky. You gotta just. Get it on the green. That's the thing, you don't want to leave it. I mean, you were pricing earlier, you don't want to leave it short. And I'm putting well. I just yeah, want to putt at it. Get on the green. Because this is going to come out with no spin. I'm thinking, if anything, cheat right. Because once you kick left, but two, you got a little bit of uphill that'll help slow it down. You get going too far left, and it's going to run. Oh. Don't get mad at good swings. I've, I've absolutely oh, flushed yeah, that. It's right over the I absolutely flushed it. All right, Dallas. That, that's going to be up by that water sprinkler. I'm going to go ahead. Yep. And I've set the stage. It's a tough shot. Scrambling's gonna be right. tough out here. Need the speed. We don't have rough like this in Texas, so I'm adjusting to the grass on the fly. Not a shot I get to practice very often. Be so good. Sit. Slow down. Can't do much better, bud. Nope. Nope. I'll take that 100 percent time. Uh, honestly, I don't know how it's gonna do better without landing in the rough. I was in a bad spot. I would have taken that and not swung, to be honest with you. We don't have rough like this in Texas. So clearly I'm happy with the result, but it isn't close. I now have 18 feet for par. Sometimes you just have to know that the shot in front of you is difficult and accept the result. This was one of those times. Let the putt be the great shot and avoid the two chip. And that's a bogey as we move to one over par. But I would argue three good golf swings. I'm not upset at that hole. The third hole is a straightforward par four and the tees were up. So we can move those in the explore mode of the Tangent app. 
This also means that the caddy is suggesting a three wood. I should be able to easily carry the bonkers and yeah. find the fairway. I like it. We got a good number here. Which I do. Perfect position leaves me just about 70 yards to the hole. Pulled it a little. Good spot. Yep. All right, tap a cop left, I think. A great wedge puts me inside 12 feet. It's a good look and a chance for a quick bounce back. Just looking to heat up the putter. You've noticed by now that I'm logging my putt details. This lets me see my green reading trends after the round. So for this particular round, I tended to miss low and short. I've already missed two putts low and right, but with the green reading details, I'll know what to work on for round two. That gets us to the fourth hole and the location of our first coaching moments in the Tangent app. And that one is out of bounds. Only by a foot, but the ball was just in the trees with a pretty unforgiving white line. That means I get a do-over, and not the good kind. The coaching moment in Tangent walks me through analyzing what happened to cause this tee shot. Sometimes it's just a bad swing, but in this case, I was uncommitted to my target and I was protecting from a hook. It was a mental mistake. We'll reset, recommit to the target, and hit my third off the tee, which is a beauty. Player two is pretty good. And now we have the chance to flip the script with a good approach shot. It's just a short wedge in, and I hit a really good one to six oh, feet. Left. A great bounce back and one of my best shots of the round. Thank you. Perfect. Nice. Go, go make putt. Unfortunately, no, the putt doesn't break, and I pay yeah. the price for the poor tee shot with a double to drop to plus three. Honestly, I would have told you the same thing, but I mean, I would have said it would have gone left, hey, especially a little breeze pushing it too. Adversity early. Onward and upward to the fifth hole. They had the tee box up on this one as well, so just a bit over 150 yards with the pin tucked back and to the right. Another green favoring a cut, which oh, I don't do. At least not on purpose. I couldn't quite get it started out there, so it bounds just over the green. While I lost strokes overall with my short game, I did gain from fairway lies, and this was one of those where I did a great job of judging the pace to get this close to the Thank hole you. and stop the bleeding. A band-aid par. These big tournaments are a grind. Nothing is easy. The sixth hole is a dogleg left par five, my favorite, with bunkers through the fairway. You're just trying to hug the left-hand side to get the best look at this reachable par five. But I come out of this one and invite you to the block party, again. That goes into a fairway bunker and qualifies as a driving mistake. Unfortunately, this won't be my only driving mistake as I hit four drives into some kind of trouble, costing me over 2.1 shots in this round. You don't have to hit fairways, but you need to avoid driving into trouble. Luckily, this is a par five, and there's room to recover. A three shot hole now, and a good fairway bunker shot gives me just a wedge into this green. But a mediocre wedge leaves a long putt that I leave short. Again, we're seeing a trend here. Good speed. From that distance, you're just wanting an easy two putt, so job done. And if you're gonna get mad, get mad at the wedge. Now I don't know what my buddy Trey was doing on this hole, but somehow we missed two shots on the camera. The battery probably died, but after hitting a few iron shots left, I overcompensated and blocked this one into the right rough near the trees. I had a tough shot to a green that runs away and chunked a wedge, toll house. Then hit a second wedge to 15 feet, just an absolute mess. That's a two chip and more evidence I'm not good from this rough, double bogey. Wheels are getting wobbly at this point. Keep a good attitude. Which takes us to hole eight. A short par four with the tees moved up again for us means I don't need driver. Just trying to thread it to the fat part of the fairway with a four hybrid. Pretty good swing there, but someone planted a couple trees in the middle of the fairway. Golf is hard enough without fairway trees, in my opinion. Not really in play, but at least a little uncomfortable. Honestly, my ball striking was pretty solid on this day. I hit most of them out of the center. I just struggled a bit with face control. 
I like to track the strike quality with Tangent, particularly of my bad shots, so I know my tendencies when I miss to work on my ball striking later. I hit a pretty decent shot here to 24 feet and had a shot at birdie. But I gunned the putt well by. Make the comebacker, it's a par. So here we are at the ninth hole, home of the second coachable moment. This is a pretty severe dogleg left with the middle of the dogleg protected by a big tree on the corner. Tangent's AI caddy was suggesting three wood, but I didn't feel super comfortable laying back. However, driver has a chance of going through the fairway, so there isn't a great option. When in doubt, smash it. But at least commit to it. I didn't. I cover the water, but not the hazard. This is a nasty lie with no shot to the green. Rule number one when you're in trouble, get out. All I can do is punch this to the fairway and try to get up and down with a wedge. It's okay. It's all right. We missed the wedge on camera, but we didn't miss much. We'll take it. And I have 18 feet for par, which I leave low and right. It's honestly a disastrous front nine, a 42. Pretty good you can else. dwell on the mistakes or you can keep grinding. And I'm going to keep grinding. I'll save the bad attitude for later. That's called foreshadowing. Better move. You have to start with a good drive. I do that good with ball. 271 yards down the left. I've not hit many fairways so far, and while my right misses have been more costly, I'm missing both ways. There's probably a joke in there somewhere. This ball was in deep rough that I had no chance to reach the green and had to just punch out to set up a wedge. Just an eight iron, but this is no time to make things worse. You've got to make sure to really commit to layups. And I did. That layup got me pretty close to the green, leaving just over 50 yards, a chance to get a good looking birdie putt. But it is an elevated green over a bunker, so it's a difficult one to get right. A good swing leaves just six feet. And finally, a birdie. Cue the parade. That gets me back to five over. At this point, I've got to make sure not to think about score or I could get disappointed. Keep committing to each and every shot. That's all you can do. A good tee shot leaves me 140 yards in the fairway. Just a pitching wedge to this front right pin. And this one just didn't come out well. It goes down in the books as an approach mistake because from position A, I've left myself a tough lie in the bunker. If you want to score, you just can't do that. There was plenty of green behind this pen and I chose too aggressive of a target, paid the price. You should always take one more to front pens. I agree. Can you play it out here? Instead of going at it? Is that any better? Ball below my feet and there is vegetation in the bunker that is going to catch the hosel. I have no idea where this ball is going to go. Hit and hope. Oh. I chunk this a little bit and it rolls well away from the hole, but it's on the green. On the green. Come on. Come on. Oh. I almost make the 45 footer but I give the birdie right back. Good roll, Dallas. What can I say? I'm a giver. The 12th hole is a longer par three and I'm hitting a six iron. Generous green, just get on the surface and two putt. I hit 42% of opportunities to get on the green with approach clubs, which just isn't good enough for where I wanna be. I'm struggling with distance as I've missed several greens long and three to the left. Long for me usually means I'm jacked up and hitting the ball hard. And the left miss led to a swing change this last offseason. I almost make another, but that's two lip outs and two holes. Just brutal. This one power lips like it was trying to slingshot around the moon into outer space. Leaving me six feet coming back, but I land the rover safely. 
The 13th hole is a shorter par 4, and the bunkers are not much of an issue as I should be able to easily carry them off the tee. Good swing. I hit a good one here that sets up a little wedge from 100 yards. A good number for me, and I hit another solid one. Just six feet left. It's hard at moments like this in the round to not press. The ball striking hasn't been great, losing strokes off the tee and on approach. I finally hit a good one and I feel like I just have to make this putt. So it's deflating when I leave another one low and right. Channel my inner Dory. Just keep swimming. Life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. The 14th hole veers slightly to the right with a bunker that pinches in right around where I wanna land my driver. There should be plenty of room to the side with the wide fairway, but I pull this one and put myself in another bunker. I guess I like a challenge. These, again, are driving mistakes. When you look at the 2.8 strokes I lost driving, 2.1 of those were due to mistakes. I continue to stress my approach game with poor tee shots. This approach has to get up over a lip and around a tree to grandmother's house we go, over 120 yards later. It's just not necessary. I prefer to take the highway, but now that we're here, we gotta find the back road. I hit a pretty good little shot here that just covers the tree and gets to the rightmost portion of the yeah, green. A good lag, an easy two putt, and a stress-free par in the end. The 15th hole is a reachable par 5 with a speed slot past the bunkers on the left. To this point, I've grinded out an even par on the back 9, and I'm turning a poor round into a decent one. AI Caddy has me aiming down the left, and I pound another one it's over the bunker. Down. As a quick aside, my We're playing partner there. who's walking almost lost the ball and spent Just a ton of time looking for it. We fell behind. Remember that. I like the seven. I like the way you're. All right. So we chose a seven iron from 195, expecting to land short of the green and bounce up there just right of the bunker. Another potential flyer lie in the rough, and that came out perfect, or so we thought. Yeah, it's a great shot. Oh goodness, sit. Jeez. Holy crap. It's too good. It bounded all the way over the green and into the rough. That's another miss long. Someone must have switched my protein shake with Bryson's. I'm hitting it well and getting more out of it than I expect. Yep. I don't normally hit a 7-iron over 200 yards. It's really testing my patience here. I need to try and get up and down for birdie, but this is by no means an easy up and in. It's an elevated green. It runs away from me, so I'm just trying to land this a yard or two on the surface, which I do, but it comes in soft, leaving over 5 feet for birdie. But it's another good look on the back 9, and another missed putt low. I'm just not reading enough. I need to spend some time at the library. That's what I call my putting green. I'll log it in the Tangent app. I'm playing great golf on this back nine and just not yet turning it into a score. So keep staying patient, one shot at a time. You don't get to play great because you want to. The 16th is a downhill par four dog leg left. It's one of the tighter tee shots, so AI Caddy has me hitting a two iron to prioritize finding the fairway. You don't want to go through. And I hit this well, and it just covers the bunker and is lucky enough to stay up on this flat lie. Time to take advantage of the good break and get on this green. I hit a good one here, but it doesn't quite get to the surface, and I'll be putting from the apron, which, thanks to Tangent, I know I am surprisingly bad at. Coming from Texas, you'd think I'd understand the Texas wedge. And this one is no different. Nothing tricky here, and I left it easily six feet short. So much for a stress-free par. Luckily, I eat stress for breakfast. That is, if I ate breakfast, I make the putt. At this point in time, a rules official comes out of the woods to tell us we are a hole and a half behind. We have less than 10 minutes to play the last two holes, or we will be penalized. No warning, no context, just a hard timer. I'm gonna let this run, but I lost it a little bit here. This is the second year in a row my group got put on the clock. The second year in a row, it wasn't my fault. And I didn't handle it well. I got angry, very angry. 
The culprit was my playing partner, who wasn't fast already, but he was also walking with his dad as a caddy. They're trying to enjoy the trip and do a real caddy experience, but that means a lot of long discussions over shots and backing off. Not great with a hard four-hour scorecard time. So I rushed it on 17. I bladed a chip, made a bad bogey. Cue incoherent rambling as I storm off the green. I hit two good shots onto the green on 18, but since my playing partners had puttered out, they left me. They're trying not to get penalized, and I'm the last one being timed. The rules official is sitting on the edge of the green, and instead of calmly two-putting, I rushed. Easy. And the last lesson for this round. You can't control who you get paired with, but I would have been better off risking a two-shot penalty than giving myself two bogeys by rushing when I'm the fastest player in that group. Yeah, take a breath, man. Need this one. A three putt. I feel like we learned a lot from this round and we'll take that going forward. Like and subscribe for more from the film room.